So this is part two of our diverter valve install with the electrical components. It's not very complicated at all, but we'll just show you what we do to, to route it and, and where we ended up putting everything. Uh, if you missed part one, with, which was the hydraulic portion of the, of the system, we, I'll put a link to that up in, in the top and we'll just go from there. But thanks for tuning in. So right now we're, uh, we're going to take this whole fender off. We've mostly got it. Just got, I think, one more bolt just holding on uh, so I can access the base of this uh, joystick lever down here to get it apart and s reroute the wire and, and see if I can actually get the this off without breaking it or bend it where it is without breaking it. I need to, to raise it up a little more so it'll be comfortable with the with that extended, you know, larger joystick to operate the um, hydraulics. So that's where we are and we will come back. So we just took the whole cylinder out there, or I guess there's actually two cylinders, but the whole unit and um, because it is one piece down in there, there's no like loosening that. So I got that as you can see in the vise and I'm just gonna try to straighten it out uh, manually. Got some of the bend out of it. I just put a, I slid a piece of pipe over it, and you know while I had it in there in the vise, so it wouldn't actually screw up any of the important stuff down there. Uh, despite my having it wrapped, it scraped it up a little bit, but I'll touch that up with some paint. Might put some kind of sleeve or something over there, but I, I don't know. It's not that much before it goes down in the tube. So we're gonna, gonna try to put it all back together now. A good thing about having a worn out cover there with my boot is it's easy to slide these cords through. So we just added the hot wire to one of the empty slots here on the switch behind the key so it's tied it'll be tied into the key and only have power when it's plugged in or when the key's on <laughs> rather and i think i got it clamped in there pretty good just gonna put it all back together and and test it out again so it's hard to see now but we we did get our wires our harness and wires in this container and ran it out and this does not extend really much past this plate so we just ran it down and then below through there out of the way and zip tied it under here and uh with our excess wire that's it obviously it comes with i think like 13 feet of the harness uh roll there and you can even get more if you if you need it but there's obviously a lot more than we needed uh, but right up in here is there was a bolt going into a frame so i that's what i use for my grounding bolt so that's it with everything hooked up now um we've kind of gone back and forth with with the routing of these hoses where they go on over or under and I think we're going to leave it under. We'll just kind of see how that goes. But so you see, um, it is hooked up to the key, the, the power. So nothing's going there when you press the button and you turn the key on. Even though we don't have any implement to test out yet, we know we're getting power. You can hear that clicking, or you might can. I don't know if you can hear it on the video or not. So we should be ready. So that's it. YouTube, um, we're calling this one done. I'm very happy to be done with it. I wish it uh, not taken any longer for me to do than it did to, to watch on video. Uh, but there's still just a few little, you know, things tidying up, you know, zip ties and securing everything in the hoses back to the undercarriage. Uh, but otherwise we're ready for our implement. I just, that's the only thing we still lack is, is the skid steer mounting bracket and, and then when we get that in we get
give you some videos of all this in action and it'll get some real world testing to make sure everything's still operating. But I was gonna just kind of give you a breakdown of what I spent on this, cause it was more than I expected. You know, obviously looking at the prices going in that, but uh, you know, that often happens with projects you get into that they cost more than you expect. But so the, just kind of run down the kit again that I got was, was one of the more minimal kits as far as the what it included that was three hundred and ten dollars plus the mounting bracket was another forty um then uh all my hoses which is which of course you might not necessarily want to count that in in your expense for that but if you don't already have the hoses then you, you know you got to have them uh i probably spent was about 160 dollars on the hose itself plus another 100 to 140 in that range for um the fittings so that's what really you know hit me more that i that i was not prepared for was was all the the, the fittings and those quick couplers on the front with that bracket is another 70 dollars um fortunately all the stuff that i ordered this summit is free shipping so that didn't that didn't add anything to to my cost but if you're looking at a total of what i spent just under 700 dollars on this this whole thing to do it myself if you um you know didn't need as many hoses or fittings than or as much hose and fittings that obviously could knock your price down some and if you are making your own plates or, or mounting it directly to your tractor or something like that you could knock off as much as you know 60 more dollars for that and, and and get it back down maybe around the 600 hundred dollar range for for, for all of it. But anyway, I hope that gives you an idea of uh, what to expect if you're considering doing this for yourself. It's not that hard. I did not have, you know, any experience with this getting into it. And so, and I managed just fine, or at least so far so good. But that's it. Thanks for watching y'all. And uh, please hit that like and subscribe button if you want more content like this, but come back to see us.